everybody, Clint here with Classic Firearms, coming at you guys today from Take Aim Training and Range. And today's video is all about length, and uh, specifically barrel length, all right? And, uh, you know, let's just go ahead and answer this question. What is the perfect barrel length for your AR-15? And the uh, short answer is, there isn't. Or it really comes on down to what you want and the purpose that that rifle is going to serve for you, or pistol. So. Let's just go ahead and hop right into it. Now you've got everything from short barrels, which can be determined by seven inches all the way up to 14 and a half. And then maybe even just under that because typically the standard is 16 inches. That is what's pretty much considered a rifle through the current laws and things like that, which we'll get into in just a moment. But also too, this video, it's specifically about 5.56-223 AR-15s. Now you've got other types of beasts out there, like these guys over here, 6.5 Grendel, 300 Blackout. We'll talk more about other calibers here in just a moment, but let's go ahead and talk about these guys specifically right here. We've got my Mark 18 here, 10.3 inch barrel. Got a LWRC M6, this guy's got a 16 inch barrel. And then we've got a PWS Mark 111, and this guy's got an 11.8 inch barrel. So really what it comes down to is, what is your purpose for that rifle? If you're going for something more CQB, close quarters type stuff, then maybe a shorter barrel is preferred, right? Because you want something a little bit more maneuverable. You want something that you don't have to really worry about door jams with, things like that, stuff that you can put really tight to the body, right? Easy enough. And this is one of my favorite shooting rifles. And yes, this is a rifle. What makes it a rifle is the fact that this is a registered short-barreled rifle, an NFA item, National Firearms Act. And uh, this has a 10.3 inch barrel and uh, it's a heck of a lot of fun to shoot. Heck of a lot of fun to shoot, right? Now there's something with shorter barrels though that you kind of get, uh, specifically too, like these Daniel Defense Mark 18s, uh, they are a little gassy, right? They're a little bit more over gas and that's to try to help with reliability. Because what you get with shorter barrels, you have that distance that travels pretty much once the bullet passes the gas block, right? We have one that I can show you that's easier, but pretty much passes the gas block this good little guy right in here, and then the bullet exiting it out through the muzzle. With that being such a short area, what's called dwell time, uh, you run into an issue where reliability might become a factor. Just wanted to empty that out while we were talking about it. But anyway, but so what Daniel Defense has done to try to help compensate for that is just open up that gas port more and so you get a little bit more gas. Now, that's cool for reliability and things like that, but that also means it's gonna add a little bit more wear to all these parts. You're gonna have higher pressures coming back, things like that, at a much higher rate which is fine, but over a period of time, you might notice things start to diminish or wear quicker. I put a heavier buffer in mine to try to help slow things down. Felt recoil on these guys are super nice as well, uh, but you do get into that issue again uh, of all of those gases, felt recoil, things like that. Now, when you start stepping it up to these longer guys, there we go, there's the, you guys see it from that side, that gas break, or that, excuse me, that gas block right through here, as that bullet has a longer distance to travel, boom, they, there it is. I mean, that's really just how simple it is. So what it comes down to is if you want to have greater velocity, reach out to greater distances, things like that, then maybe a longer barrel is what you are looking for. Not to say that you can't hit targets with a shorter barrel at you know, distance, 300 yards, something like that, but you start to lose the effectiveness of that 5.56 cartridge or 223, depending on what you're shooting. So if you would like to have something that's gonna have still kicking up a little bit of good muzzle velocity, uh, typically you're looking at a much slower muzzle velocity here. So like I just said, you start to lose that effectiveness of the 5.56 cartridge. So if you wanna keep that out at a greater distance, hit that velocity, things like that, then having a longer barrel like the 16 inch is where it's at, right? But let's say you still want to have like kind of like that great little, I don't know, compromise maybe, then something like the 11.8 on this PWS here might be more th to what you are looking for, all right? So really what it comes down to, guys, is uh, what's most comfortable for you. Now, shooting something like the 10.3 and going through the 16 inch, you'll notice a little bit lighter recoil impulse on these types of firearms and things like that. Um, but 
Also, what you have to think about too are the legalities of things. And this is where things start to get kind of funny because the moment you start shortening this barrel from 16 inches, you either have to purchase a pistol or you have to register because of the NFA. <laughs> Let me know down below how much you guys hate the NFA. Uh, you have to start registering short barreled rifles like this little guy here. And what does that mean? That means you now you have to pay a tax stamp of at least, well, not at least, but it is $200. And then for every other NFA item you want to add to it, another $200, not on top of the price already of the system that you are purchasing. And uh, just for you guys that don't know, if you were making this purchase and this purchase at the same time, that's called a uh, two tax stamp or double tax or whatever you wanna call it. Yes, that's $400 in taxes. Now you have to pay in addition to the sales tax of the, already the stuff you're buying in addition to whatever the price is that you're buying all the stuff for. So money really starts becoming a thing whenever you start getting into these shorter systems. Now, granted you have the options of pistols, which no longer a stock, it's a pistol brace and you can't throw vertical grips on there. So it really kind of goes into a debate of whether or not short barreled rifles are worth it or not whenever you could just buy something like this and pretty much have the, I don't want to say the exact same thing, but have a very similar product at the end uh, just with a brace instead of a stock and also instead of a vertical grip, you either get an angled grip or a hand stop like what you see on this guy right here. So barrel length really starts to play a part like that. But we all know that, you know, None of that should matter. And if you want to have a short barrel on a AR, it should just be that. But you know, I can't say things like that. But anyway, yes, I can. So what it comes down to really, guys, is what are what's, what's the mission? What do you want your rifle or pistol for? Like I said, if it's going to be you know, a close quarters type thing, then sure, maybe going something shorter is exactly what you're looking for. If you're not worried about the effectiveness of 5.56 and its muzzle velocity at 300 yards because most of the targets you're gonna be engaging are within 25, then sure, go for it. But if you still wanna have the capability of you know, 100 yard, I guess you could say effectiveness, then yeah, 10.3 is gonna be just fine for you. I wouldn't go anything shorter than that means personally. Now granted, there are a lot of firearms out there uh, <laughs> that do go shorter than that 10.3 inches uh, that are a lot of fun to shoot, sure, but they're loud, they're obnoxious, and uh, if you just want to go freedom hard, then go all about it. I'm all about it, but me personally, you really lose just about everything effective about the 5.56 cartridge um, once you start going anything shorter than that 10 inch mark, right? So something else to think about. Another thing to think about are these guys. If you are already playing the NFA game and you decide to go ahead and start suppressing, then sweet, go ahead and start doing that. But there's something that I would like to do. I do love suppressing my 10.3 here. Now by doing so, I'm adding about 6.4 inches, that's the length of the SOCOM 5.56 RC2 here, to the Mark 18. So now I've got something with just over 16 inches. And if I were to have this on a standard 16 inch gun, I'm now looking at something that's pushing out 20, 22 inches. Uh, so having something like this and compact and still work effectively and still silence, you know, I put in quotations because it's far from silent, uh, that's actually a lot better for me and uh, my purposes. So I like having this capability, all right? So suppressing is a lot of fun, but you gotta think you're adding something that has a little bit of weight to it at the end of your muzzle, and of course that's gonna start accumulating weight. Ounces equal pounds, pounds equal pain. How many times have I said that before, right? Now there's also a debate out there too, like what is the best length, barrel length for a dual type rifle. Uh, you know, you have 11.8, you have 11.5, you have 10.3, you have 16 inches, you have 14 and a half, which is pretty much the United States military has said, yep, that's, that's the go-to because, well, I think they might have some kind of funny reasons as to why they think 14 and a half inches is the perfect length for the M4 or AR style rifles. And that's because one, they're still getting that velocity. They're still getting quite the effectiveness out of the 5.56 cartridge. Um, but 14 and a half inches is pretty much as short as you can go to effectively mount a bayonet as well. Hoorah, Semper Fi, right? So 14 and a half inches I think is also a great barrel length. I do love shooting that, you know, the M4 things and so on. Uh, but really guys, like I said before, it comes down to what you want. Do you want a full length rifle? Do you want to go something that's even 
you know, <laughs> fuller length. Uh, I do love, you know, DMR type setups with 18 inch to 20 inch barrels. Enter <laughs> the Mark 12, right? One of my favorite platforms all around. And these things here are super accurate. They've got, they're completely effective at distance. You know, you're talking 500 yards plus, things like that. And that is a whole lot of fun. Again, are you doing this for hunting? What is your intended prey? Things like that. If you're doing this for home defense and you're worried about over penetration, go with something that has a much shorter barrel and go with something with hollow point ammunition, maybe frangible to something like that. And then you really don't have to worry about that because with shorter barrels, you lose velocity, which also loses penetration. And we see that just on our steel target when being shot with a 62 grain bullet out of the 10.3 versus a 16 inch, you can notice much more pitting with a 16 inch versus what looks like just splatter with a 10.3 inch on a still AR500 target that's behind me. So all of that you kind of have to take into account, right? So all of it's a lot of fun, but ultimately what it really comes down to is guys, you. Personally, you, what do you think works best for you? And the best way to tell that is to go out there and train with whatever it might be. If you might wanna go to a gun range and rent some firearms and see what, see what works best for you, ultimately. See if you like the recoil impulse of the shorter barrels compared to the longer barrels which have a little bit lesser recoil. Guys, there's so much you could talk about. We haven't even talked about twist rate on barrel. So if you wanna hear a video all about twist rate and barrel length and what type of weight to use for a certain twist rate and barrel lengths, let me know down in the comments. But like I said, today was mostly just your standard 5.56 uh, coming out of these different barrels. Now there are other calibers out there that work better in shorter barrels like the 300 Blackout. I think it's most effective in about nine inches or so because you get that full powder burn out of already a pretty heavy projectile with a pretty short uh, uh, casing. 5.56 five, to get that full burn you need at least about 20 inches or so and it was really originally designed to be shot out of a 24 inch barrel I, I believe so got to think about that right you have a lot of excess powder still built up in these short barrels and that's why they're so much louder because you have all these unburnt gases escaping hitting the cool air giving you that bang not to mention the secondary crack that you're going to hear which is the bullet breaking the speed of sound science it's awesome that's why firearms are super cool among other reasons also it's all right um, so other things that are out there and if you're looking forward to a cool video alexander arms 65 grindle uh, pistol, this thing's gonna be pretty fun. So another one, all these different calibers that exist and that might perform differently or better in different barrel lengths compared to ARs chambered in 556223. It's a lot, I know, but go do your homework. Go do some research and see what really is gonna fit you the best. Home defense, truck, gun, I know, those are typically the two biggest things or just to have for fun out the range doing some planking. Up to you guys, let me know down in the comments What's the best length for you? Because I want to hear from you. The best length for the Honey Badger is about seven inches because that's what the barrel is on this guy right here. 300 blackout pistol. And yes, this is a pistol as of right now. If you want to have a little bit more information as to what's going on and why I say as of right now, um, hopefully it stays this way. But uh, just go check out our video announcing this as our current giveaway. Coming with a Surefire 60 round mag, EOTech XPS 3, holographic, Geisley two stage trigger. This thing is sweet, guys and the honey badger just don't care. God bless you guys. Get your entries in at classicfirearms.com and we'll see you soon.